Welcome everybody. Thank you for being with us today. Um, we are have a very great content today. We have Mary Ann Hughes talking about considerations in a special needs divorce. It's a, a very important topic and it's the first time that, that I'm, I'm hosting her and thank you for being here. Allison, thank you again for being here. But before uh, I, I, um, I start, we start the presentation, we are going to talk to you guys about Partner Resource Network very quick. So Partner Resource Network is the pain training and information centers for Texas, and we are funded by the Department of Education, Office of the Special Education Department, and we provide free resources uh, for parents of children with disabilities and youth with disabilities that we call them self-advocates. Our mission is to empower and support Texas families and individuals impacted with disabilities or special health care needs. We serve parents of children with disabilities and youth with disabilities from the ages of, from zero to 26 years old. So we have four projects serving parents here in Texas. I'm part of the team project, as you can see in the red area. So team project, I'm in region 13, that's Austin and Surrounds area. And we have also region 20, that's San Antonio. And we have region one, that is the um, Rio Grande Valley area from Brownsville to Laredo. So all that red area is team project and uh, I'm part of that, but uh, if you are out of that area, we have 20 regional coordinators serving parents here in Texas. Just ask me and I can find out who's the coordinator, coordinator near to you. Our services are free and we offer parent workshops, youth workshops, webinars like this one, information and referrals, one-on-one -on -one technical assistant. We do a lot of supports in the R meetings and prepare you guys with a revision of the IEP. Uh, we do once a year a symposium. We offer parent leadership trainings and youth leadership trainings. So for today, so today your microphone and your video camera is off. If you have a question, please type it in the chat box or in the Q&A, and we will answer your questions during this presentation. Also, we are recording this presentation. We are going to share with you guys a YouTube link that Consolidated Planning Group is going to edit for you, and we are going to share that. And after tomorrow, also in our uh, team, uh, Partner Resource Network team project Facebook pages, we are going to share this presentation in there too. At the end of this presentation, you are going to receive a link with a survey. It's an evaluation about our presentation. Please help us with that. We appreciate your honest feedback. And with that, we report to our grant and we continue to give you, you guys free presentations and resources. And also we do not provide CEUs, but if you need a certificate of attendance, please type it in the chat box and I can make that possible to you. So um, my name again is Veronica Avers and I'm the Regional 13 Coordinator for Partner Research Network. This is my contact information is also in the chat box, my phone number, my email, and uh, please visit our website, www.prntexas.org. We have great information about uh, everything about disabilities, about special education, you name it. And thank you for, again, for being here with us today. So Allison, thank you for being here. So she's going to introduce Marianne and uh, take it away. Uh, thanks, Veronica. Thanks for having us back. As always, it's wonderful uh, to be here with you. I think we're with you tomorrow again. I, if I was looking at my calendar yes. right, so anyway, two days in a row. How about that? College. <laughs> yes, for sure. And also, um, Veronica, when you send us the recording, go ahead and send it. Um, CC Meredith, but she's out today, so um, email it to my email address so my sure. other staff will. Um, they'll send that out today um, in that her absence. So um, perfect. So Allison Skaberg, um, Marianne, you can go ahead and share your screen if you want. Um, Allison Skaberg here with Consolidated Planning Group. Um, and today uh, we are talking about considerations in a special needs divorce. So um, if you've joined us in the past, um, Consolidated Planning Group, we are a holistic special needs planning firm and 
Um, we pride ourselves on um, doing a lot of webinars, educational webinars for families um, with special needs kids, kids that are transitioning. Um, and the, the why behind that is empowering you, empowering parents and putting those tools and resources in your hands. Um, so that way, what is complicated isn't as complicated as it seems. Um, so that way you can navigate some of these rough waters um, as it relates to planning for special needs. So um, I would argue that um, life with special needs at times, most times can be complicated at best, and that's being very polite um, on some of the journeys that we, um, that we encounter as parents. So I am a mom to four, and I have two kids with special needs. I've got one that has transitioned and one that is transitioning, turning 18 next month, if you can believe it, the baby. Anyway, um, but today, uh, this topic that we're talking about, honestly, we don't talk about it very often, um, and we should talk about it more, but it's considerations in a special needs divorce, as if... Uh, as families with special needs kids, we don't have enough on our plate. You throw in uh, the, you know, the divorce and it really starts getting complicated. Um, but so today, um, so I share this journey in the past. It was many years ago. I'm very happily married and have a wonderful husband now. But I went through this process, as did Mary Ann. And, um, and what we would say is it can be pretty painful and pretty horrible on, on, on every level. And we always hope uh, for the best when it comes to divorce. And we hope for parents that are on the same page as providing for the, the needs of the special needs child, but it doesn't always work that way. And we are not um, pro-husband or pro-wife or pro-anything. You know what we are? is pro-best interest of the child and making sure that your child with special needs has their needs met, not just now, but in the future. And the thing is, is in divorce, aside from any other issues and blame game and anything else, at the end of the day, when we have a child that's going to need care for the rest of their life, we got to put those things aside. We got to at least try put those things aside and look at that. So um, I'm excited to have Marianne Hughes back with us. We've done a couple presentations with her in the um, past, and um, she's with Special Family Transition. She is very networked. Um, with other professionals in the divorce industry. She is not an attorney. She works very close with attorneys, um, but she has an entire company on working with special needs families um, that may be going through uh, this this process. So I'd just like to um, say, Marianne, thank you for being here. I'm going to turn everything over to you, but I guess I just wanted to say one more thing is if your journey right now is like you feel like you can't see the forest for the trees, um, there seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I can definitely say that Marianne and I were definitely there at one point, but the smoke does clear and the light does come back and it does get better and having a plan and working your plan and just kind of checking things off the list is very helpful. So, um, buckle up, listen up, take your notes. Uh, today again, it's going to be recorded we're going to send that recording out. We want you to put your questions in the chat box, and we're going to get to just as many as possible. So thanks so much, Marianne. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you so much, Allison and Veronica, for having me here today. I'm honored to be able to share my story and some advice that I've learned along the way and been researching so I can share it with you all to make your process hopefully a little easier than maybe mine was and maybe Allison's as well. So um, thanks, and feel free to put your questions in the chat if you don't feel comfortable. Um, having them out for everybody to see, feel free to email me afterwards and I'm happy to help you out. And so my company, my company is Special Family Transitions. Um, uh, after my experience, I became a divorce coach to help people uh, going through these challenges. So feel free to reach out if I can help. I imagine most of you are here because you're either facing or thinking about it, but uh, know that it's, it's going to be okay and we're all here to help. And so, yeah, when you first start the process, whether you're expecting a divorce or not planning it, it comes as a big shock and there's a lot of overwhelm. You don't know where to start with your process, what to do, who to reach out to for help. And so I'm here today to share kind of what I went through when I first started so that you can figure out what to do on your path to success. And as Nelson mentioned, we're here you know, for the kids and making sure that their best outcomes um, are definitely what we're looking at. And that was my intent as well. 
And so a little bit about me. So uh, if you don't know me, I'm a mom to two boys on the autism spectrum, but not so little now. But um, when I did go through the process, they were um, definitely becoming adults. And after 21 years of marriage, I definitely, it came as a shock to me. It wasn't something I was expecting. So nothing I planned for or started thinking about in terms of long-term planning for my kids. But I was kind of thrown into the world of trying to figure out not what was gonna to happen today, but what to do in the future. <clears throat> and so my, my whole approach to divorce, even though definitely it's a painful time, it's a difficult time, my focus became my kids and what am I gonna to have to do for my kids so that they get the best outcome that they need to be able to um, have short-term and long-term needs met. And so as a result of all the things I had to do for them and the research I had to do, it took me a couple of years to go through that whole process and make sure that the outcome that was um, going to result was really in everyone's best interest. And I'm not saying yours are going to take that long, and hopefully it doesn't. And you know, someone like me or someone like Allison or other people who have been there can definitely show you shortcuts so they don't have to deal with that. And, and the more simple the process, um, we can make it for you than the less you'll have to spend in terms of money, time, and emotional energy as well. And so now my focus, after getting a great result in my divorce, is now to help others through the process. <clears throat> and so at first, you know, when you first find out you're getting divorced, you may not want to talk about it. You may not want to even accept that it's happening. But the reality is, even though you know, it takes a while to you know, sometimes deal with all the emotions, you've got to reach out to people for support, for help. And I found that uh, my network of family, friends, when I finally did open up to them, it took me a while to get there, but when I finally did, it was a huge help in lifting trying to, the burden of trying to think and have to do it all on my own. And you don't, it's, it takes a village to raise a special needs child and it takes a village in the special needs divorce. So there's so many organizations that can help you out as well. Two of them are on the call today. Um, and that's actually how I met um, Allison. It was going through a special needs uh, resource fair and she was there and provided some great advice and followed up with her. And definitely she got me going on the right track. So definitely go out and seek people, find people through the different groups, whether they're in person, online, uh, there's so many resources you can look up as to uh, those books and so on, as well as um, so many Facebook groups that can provide support. So definitely reach out. There's people who have been through it who are there to are happy to help. Also, I would suggest having some therapy and counseling, whether it's done formally or in a group or another type of session for you, um, and not only for you, but also for your kids. They're going through the same thing you are, maybe on a different level and different things that they have to consider, but really their mental health and dealing with this is not an easy thing. And actually, uh, what I was, go ahead. I was gonna say that I think that that counseling really is important and a lot of people, you know, they have a feeling that counseling is bad or dumb or expensive or whatever. Um, and I was just going to mention that um, now this is religious. So if you're not a Christian, this might not be the one for you if you have a different religion. Um, but there is one called Divorce Care, and it's a good one. And it, it is sponsored through various churches all throughout the United States. And I think it's an eight or a 12 week program. And so they, it's called DC Divorce Care. And I thought it was really good. And then also they have DC 4K, which is DC Divorce Care for Kids. So the kids groups meet alongside when your adult group is meeting and it's really, it's really good. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to share that and you can literally go to their website, Divorce Care and see where they're offering that locally. And um, like I said, I mean, if I did that for the greater Houston area, they're all over the place, all over the place. So do check that out. And the cool thing is, is it's, I think it's basically free. It's really, it's either really cheap. I think you might pay for a meal or something or, or free. I think you pay for your workbook. So if you can't afford $200 an hour, uh, psychologist sessions, uh, the, the divorce cares is a, a, a good, a good choice. 
Yeah, I totally agree. I actually did the program myself and I definitely recommend it. All I had to pay at my, the church near me was, uh, I didn't have to be a member, anybody can sign up. It was $15 for the workbook and that was it. And even then they can waive that fee if, if, you know, if need be. And so, yeah, definitely recommend that. My church didn't have- And also, the- you know, I wanted to say that you also meet people that are on your similar journey because sometimes you feel like you maybe don't relate to some of your old friends that are still married or they feel divided between you and your spouse because they were couple friends or whatever. So I I think it's also helpful to just meet some other people on a, on a similar track or um, journey um, for encouragement. So I I just wanted to mention that too. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I I actually have a um, I still have my old friends, but I actually have a whole new group of friends and resources and network that I can count on. So yeah, definitely for sure, your role will, ex- will expand. The person that you were is may not be the person that you're going to be in the future. And that actually, I can tell you from experience, you end up being a better person in the end. It becomes, it's a process. It takes time, but know that, you know, you'll heal and it'll be okay. But one thing I did find about getting support for kids and depending on their level ability, it may be hard to find an organization that uh, is offer able to offer them support and and have counseling for them. With my son, who's higher um, higher involved and more needs, you know, I tried taking him to different places and therapists, and they're like, sorry, you know, because of his level of communication and behaviors, they were not able to sign up to help him. And so this became another passion project for me. And so I'm in an organization now called Lone Star Land. And as a service project, my group has designed a series of webinars to help uh, families support their kids in the divorce process, their special needs kids. And actually our first one is tomorrow, in case you're watching this live. If not, there's, there'll be a series. Um, so check out uh, my, my uh, Facebook page for that information for, to sign up and you can still sign up and we'll have recordings as well in case you can't make it live. But definitely- um, How is Paul uh, Megan Lone Star Long? Lone Star Lend, L-E-N-D. Lend. Uh-huh. And it's a you know, great organization uh, where we learn about all different aspects of different disabilities and, and how to be uh, you know, leaders in, in the field of autism and for self-advocates, for family members and for professionals. So they're also taking applications there. I'll do a plug for them as well. But uh, definitely it's a great program. I've got that on my site as well. So yeah, definitely you know, the mental health of kids. And so this, this series will address um, self-care, will address different strategies that you can do to help your kids. And also we'll have a parent panel of people who have been through this. So, so, you know, Allison and I and a lot of people have been through this and it's, you know, sadly so common. The numbers I've heard are up to 80% of special needs families will go through a divorce because, you know, it is more stressful than a regular marriage, which in itself has 50% divorce rate. So yeah, know that, um, you know, it takes a lot of, um, a lot of focus to, you know, work on you and on your family. And then there's people there to support you. So, and so just know that you're, you're not alone. And so, you know, through this process, you know, I didn't know about this back then when I was going through divorce, but there's a whole field of people called divorce coaches. And so I looked into that and actually became one so I could help people get a better result and kind of take them through the process because it can be overwhelming. There's so much you need to think about and do. And, you know, whether like you also mentioned, sometimes, you know, having a therapist or a lawyer, they'll charge you, you know, quite a bit per hour. And, you know, in the in divorce coaches and other professionals you might find, you know, are not going to be at that same rate. So know that there's different ways that you can go about getting support. People do it all by themselves too, and that's fine. But if you need help, definitely reach out to those people that can help you. And so, as I mentioned, and Allison mentioned too, self-care is is so important as special needs parents. Sometimes we think about our kids and not think about our own needs. And so I know for years I was like that. And it took my separation to kind of wake me up to say, hey, I'm not taking care of myself. And obviously it's not getting me to the right place I want it to be. And so know that you've got to take care of yourself so that you can be in a position to take better care of your children and be able to think clearly and rationally in this divorce process. I think I also might touch on it just a little bit. This is, you know, very emotional process. And so we want to even, you know, deal with that through therapy and groups and so on. But, but you know, we want to kind of, when we can, we're ready, kind of shift then to a more rational and business type approach 
um, sadly, you know, for the situation. I say sadly because it's a you know difficult process for everybody, but look at it as a like a business deal or a transaction you've got to get done. You know, when you do financial planning, you've got to you know think about the future. And this is the same kind of thing. It's a legal and financial transaction, in effect, is what a divorce is. And so you want to make sure that you're thinking about everything that you're going to need to um, to to consider in that. So sorry, it's not, not really a self-care aspect, but, but just know that that's kind of where we're all going. We want to focus on our self-care so that we can make better decisions and, do, and be better parents for our kids in the process as well. And that may be working out and maybe taking a nap if you need to, just you know, having a little bit of time for yourself, going out for a walk, whatever your, your self-care um, routines or rituals might be. And if you don't have them, then this is a great time to at least start and figure out how to schedule that in your day or a few times a week, whatever is gonna work for you. And so there's so much going on. And so you wanna kind of make a plan and not just kind of, you know, it is overwhelming and you have a team to help you, but know what's important to you and to your family because every professional, every attorney, every one out there has a different approach. So know what's important to you, and to your family. Um, you want to find someone that aligns with your values and understand, let them know what's important to you. If having a, a relationship with you know, all members of your family is important to you in the future, then the way you handle your divorce may be a little different than a scorched earth, earth type of approach. So definitely, you know, I recommend doing things so that um, you know, you're proud of yourself and your parent, your, your kids will be happy with the way things are in the future too, because you're really doing this, as we mentioned, for them. And we don't want to put them in a situation where they're going to have to you know, resent one parent for whatever reason. And that happens, sadly. And sometimes you can't help those things, you know, in terms of how the other parent party is acting or, you know, responds. But, you know, just know that you're doing the right thing for you and, and your family to get the best result possible in the best possible way. And so, you know, there's so much to do. So just, you know, kind of make a plan, take steps towards each of those goals. And if you need people to help you in those processes, then definitely there's resources out there for you and definitely get help from friends and um, networks um, from people who have been there. And so, as we mentioned, there's you know, a lot of experts out there. And when you, um, the main, Two areas I would say you want to consider in divorce, so as I mentioned, are legal and the financial. And then for the legal side, they're going to look at things like um, how to divide property, the estate, and we'll get into that more in the presentation. But there's not just the divorce aspects, the financial aspects, but also you know how to plan for the child in the future, how to do parenting plans, and what documents you're going to need. So my point here is that. You know, you want to find an attorney who's um, a an financial professional who is experienced in special needs. There's so many professionals out there and all of them can handle it, but unless they've actually done it and understand what the considerations are, um, then you may run into trouble down the road. So definitely find someone who has experience. You're going to maybe need a family law attorney, also an estate attorney to do the special needs trust. And in terms of you know, financial things, you know, Allison definitely has so much experience in all the different aspects of current and future planning. So definitely um, you know, she can help you, help you with the, those areas. Yeah. Well, and I just wanted to reiterate that, Marianne, because um, <clears throat> one of the things that we talk about a lot um, is that all things, um, all all special needs, all planners are not like financial planners. They're not nuanced and special needs. Like 99% of them aren't, aren't nuanced and special needs. And all estate planning attorney are all divorce attorneys. Again, less than 1% of divorce attorneys are specialized and special needs are very, very nuanced and special needs. And, um, and so we're not suggesting that your divorce attorney isn't capable of handling a divorce, but what we do see is if you are not partnering with somebody that is nuanced and special needs divorce um, or, or have hired a, a, an outside consultant that is working with your attorney on the special needs aspects, we find that things get set up incorrectly or, um, or they don't pay attention to things that may matter in the future. 
And one of the big things is in the state of Texas, oftentimes child support continues past age 18 um, for an individual with disabilities. And that doesn't matter until they turn 18, okay? So when they turn 18, if your child support is not directed to a first party special needs trust, that child support is going to be basically imputed as income. Um, at least two thirds of it is income against um, their qualifications for SSI. So that so your child might not be getting SSI and Medicaid right now because you make too much money and they don't qualify. But it's based off of their assets when they turn 18, not yours. And so also that child support that continues post 18 is income to them, not you, even though it might be coming to you. So there are a lot of little things like that. So if your divorce isn't final or you're working on these things, um, or if you're shopping, if you're new in this process and you're shopping for an attorney, asking them um, about what their, um, you know, what their understanding of these things are, or how would they handle these things is really important. And it's going to save you money in the long run, time and money, because it's easier to get these things set up on the front end than trying to go back and undo things that were done wrong and get them set up on the back end. Exactly. You want to make sure that your degree is, is uh, written in the right way with all the right language so that uh, you or your child are not penalized in the future, for sure. And so, yes, yeah, so divorce can be either simple or complicated, can be short. The minimum in Texas is 60 days, and it could take years if you go the, you know, possibly the trial route. So um, my advice would be try to come to an agreement um, with the other party in terms of the best interests of the children. And if for some reason you can't get there, there's you know different ways to approach that. But um, yeah, definitely the longer it's gonna take, the more it's gonna cost too. So keep that in mind. Yes, and and I think you know sometimes there are some um, people that I've known that there is just no other way, you know the the like litigated divorce the court everything went to court all all matters go to court in front of a judge, that takes time which equates to years not months, and it's a lot of money anytime they're going into the courtroom. So the thing is is at the end of the day. Um, it's all money. Okay. So on both sides, you know, a husband and wife are spending lots of money and, and the attorneys are winning and you know, who's losing your child's college fund or future care fund for your special needs child and things like that. So ultimately, if there is any way at all possible to do anything other than going to court in the courtroom and to come to these agreements, it is, it is way better. I mean, so it, it just, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars that could be used on your family as opposed to going to uh, a, attorneys. So it, it's worth, worth the while, even if you've got to hire a professional mediator or whatever you got to do and pay that, it, it is definitely worth it and cheaper. Right. That's where those professionals come into play that have the experience with special needs. You can find special needs focused parenting coordinators and mediators and coaches and people like Allison. So for sure, you know, with the right information presented in the right way, hopefully you can avoid a lengthy and complex, uh, expensive trial for sure. Um, Marianne, we had a little question and this is a good one for you to answer. Um, what can I do if I already have an at attorney, it's still in the process, but let so let's say that they've hired an attorney, that attorney has zero background and special needs and they're realizing maybe that's not the right fit should they hire a special needs person to work with that attorney or, or what, what is your recommendation there sure so it depends on your um comfort and satisfaction with that current attorney if you'd like to continue working with them then by all means they can get the information through other ways they can consult with other attorneys who do have the experience they can bring in someone like me or Allison that can provide information to them so they can, you know, make the right decisions and, and do the right planning for you. So there's different ways you can go about it. Um, and, or you might find that perhaps going a different route with a different attorney may be the be better um, approach. Not that you won't also maybe need and, and, and oftentimes these attorneys are very smart. Um, and they'll work with you. They may have not been a specialist at special needs, but if you've done your homework or if you partnered with someone like us or Marianne or somebody like that, again, we can provide that information. It's not, you know, it's not 
so much that, you know, the human brain cannot understand or whatever. So you don't have to, you know, for lack of a better word, throw out the baby with the bathwater. If you've already hired an attorney, you've already paid that retainer and you are otherwise not unhappy with the attorney, I don't think you should have to feel like they that you need to oust them. Um, it's just providing specific information of letting them know this is important to me. This is important to the future of my child because he has special needs and he may need care for the rest of his life. Um, you know, the future care cost estimates of how much that that care is going to be in the, in the future matters. Um, you know, child support continuing post 18 might be a consideration child support to a special needs trust, a consideration, the special needs trust being set up. So those are some of the many things. But the main thing is, is when you're going through a divorce, even though the child may not qualify for benefits right now, again, the key is, is in the future, they will. And what we want to do is we want to preserve their eligibility for state and federally funded programs and not accidentally mess them up because of just a lack of understanding of how things work with the very, very complicated social social security system, if you will, SSI and Medicaid and and survivor benefits and all that kind of stuff. So we are nationally certified as social security advisors. So we can run analysis on that for you. And we are also uh, cer certified to put together future care cost estimates as far as it relates to future, future costs for your loved one, if you're trying to estimate those things as well. And all of those things matter. For sure. For sure. And I would say when you look for an attorney, if you haven't, um, sort of look at yet, definitely find ones that shares your values in addition to having some special needs knowledge. And if they don't, you can always educate them or somebody else can as well. But you want to, there's some that are more um, conflict oriented and some that are more collaborative in nature. So just you know, figure out what, what you need and what's going to be best for you. And so, yeah, for sure, you want to establish the disability. You may have school reports or you may not. And if you don't, definitely go out and get those. But also, I'd recommend getting a professional to diagnose your child and have a report out there that you either may need in your uh, divorce discussions or you also need it for social security purposes. You've got to establish disability before the age of 22 or else they may not be eligible for a lot of the benefits that, that Lousa was talking about. So keep that in mind. Um, as Alsa mentioned, you want to think about what the costs are going to be in the future, what they are now and what they're going to be later so that you can plan for what that child support amount needs to be. So child support, I'll skip down a little bit. Um, there's a guideline child support, but that's not by no means what you have to have. You may be eligible for more or need more depending on the needs of your child. And so it's real important to consider that as that's being determined. And, and you know, if, if your child is gonna be um, not capable of self-support in the future, then you can be eligible your child for what they call indefinite child support. So it won't end at 18. They call that the age of emancipation. So like in a normal divorce or you know, non-special needs cases, child support may end at 18, but in this case, it may not. So definitely, definitely check into that and go that route uh, if at all possible. And that's where some of the, the fight may come in in terms of things being more contentious or deciding on the amount, but, but try to come to an agreement as to what that amount can be um, in the future, you can modify if for some reason uh, things do change and your child's needs do go up, you can always go back later. But it's easier just to get things from the start rather than have to hire another attorney you know, right now or in the very near future. And as uh, Alison also mentioned, um, it's real important that the, the documents and the decree is phrased correctly so that child support is paid into a first party trust if your child is over 18. Um, and that can be done when they turn 18 too, but at least have the first party trust written and available and referenced in the decree if, if you know, until then you wanna um, have it paid out differently. And the reason for that is the um, government looks at the child's money and if you have over 2000 or whatever it might be, um, then you're not going to be eligible for other government benefits. So for sure, think about those things as well. You don't want to have money in their own accounts, all that. Make sure that that's all done into separate instruments, which Allison can help you definitely set up. And then in terms of the community property, 
while people assume that um, your assets and estate is going to be split 50-50, well, that may be the case, but if there's some circumstances um, that are out there that, that either you or the different parties or the judge agrees on, decides on, then you may get more than 50%. So keep, keep that in mind too. And then depending on um, your overall level of, um, of assets and so on, you may be also be eligible for um, spousal um, support and maintenance. So, so as a child- but Let's talk about that for a moment um, because that is one thing I would say that sometimes these ad divorce attorneys that are not nuanced and special needs, they're not always familiar. They're very familiar with the 50-50 state of Texas, but they're not always familiar with the dis, um, disproportionate share of community property in a special needs situation. And, um, and, and there, you know, there's all, there's a million scenarios and we don't have to go through all of them, but um, a lot of times in special needs families, what we see is that one parent may have stayed home all these years as a caregiver for these kids while the other parent, and it's, I'm not doing any roles here because it could be either way, while the other parent went to work and built their career and made a lot of money and then the caregiver, you know, stayed home and worked really hard as a caregiver, but basically um, has never worked in the last 20 years or 10 years or 15 years or since the child was born or since the accident happened or whatever, right? Um, and those are usually pretty good, solid situations where that um, disproportionate share of community property may come um, may come into play. So if you're interviewing attorneys, you may want to ask about their knowledge or what their success has been about getting a disproportionate share of community property in a special needs divorce, if that's something that you're um, that you're considering. And, and like I said, some attorneys, all attorneys are not created equally and some of them may have zero experience um, with that. So, so just be careful with that, but it is a real thing. And, um, you know, running a special needs financial planning practice, we've seen many, many times where that was the case. Um, so it's out there. Sure, there's different ways that the pie can be split, um, so to speak. So if you say go in front of a judge, um, you know, he may look at the total amounts, look at child support and kind of, you know, figure out overall what's, what, what is, you know, the divorce and, and um, condition going to look like. But yeah, the, the spousal support is harder to get, but you can prove, you know, if you don't have enough assets, you know, coming in or child support or whatever it might be. And I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not using maybe all the right terminology, but um, that's harder to get than say child support would be in establishing those needs. So yeah, definitely look at the total amount and, and how you're going to possibly um, work that. And that's where you want to work closely with your attorney to make sure that you come up with the best package and solution that, um, that you all can agree, everybody can agree to. And so in addition to all the financial things, um, you're going to have to look at things like, um, you know, who has custody in Texas or is joint managing conservatorship. But even if, if the child, you know, is, can be with both parents, there may be a, parent who is determined to be the decision maker and or have um, rights to make medical decisions in other areas as well. So, you know, keep that in mind as well. There's possession schedule. So some people may all have a, what they call standard possession order or ex uh, extended, or they may do 50-50 in some cases where a child is with one parent one week and another parent another week. So depending on the child and with special needs, you've really got to think about their needs first because, you know, some people may not do well, you know, going back and forth, back and forth is hard enough for people, say with autism, to deal with transitions and changes. And so you don't want to do something that's going to, you know, put that child in, you know, more, more stress than they already are. Um, Marianne, I think you and I can talk um, about this from a, like maybe a more educated um, perspective because we have grown kids, right? So when you're in the throes of this, a lot of times the kids become this um, this argument piece or this struggle, this push-pull of I'm going to take your kids away from you, vice versa, whoever says what, right? And it's just this I can't sleep at night, this total focus of oh my gosh, if this happens and how horrible it would be if you're going before the judge and things like that. Well, first things first, if you have small children, what I want to remind you of is they all become teenagers. <laughs> 
and things change drastically. They're not as sweet as they once were when they were really little. But what I would say is that um, at the end of the day, Marianne's right. So when we have kids with special needs, it doesn't need doesn't mean mom should never see them or dad should never see them or whatever. But sometimes those transitions are very, very hard. And the thing is, is, as parents, we think we're the ones that are going through this. But ultimately, whether you have kids with special needs or not, the kids are the ones that take the brunt of it. The kids are the ones that are going back and forth every other weekend or however they're doing it. And if we have a parent that's out of state, only seeing that parent a few times a year and things like that, the, the struggles are real. But I guess what I'm saying to you is they're not always going to be little. They are going to grow up. And um, and they the thing is, is the kid, these kids love both both parents and that's the way their brains were wired or whatever. And, if, you know, a short of abuse and other things like that, ultimately, when they turn 18, 18, they can do and say and see whoever they want, however they want or whatever they want. And, they, and they're going to do that anyway. So just finding balance in that. And again, going back to maybe not necessarily spending hundreds of thousands of dollars if you can avoid horrible custody battles because again nobody wins the attorneys win the kids lose and the attorneys win and and you lose because you're spending lots and lots of money and oftentimes oftentimes the answer is is when you go into court and you go in before the judge um neither you or the ex are ever really completely pleased with the outcome there's there's always some fallout with that so I just wanted to I I think it's 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 easy to be caught up in the moment of custody battles and it's hard to see the future of the child will turn 18 or they will become adults and they will move on Um, and I I think you know I think those things matter I mean Marianne you can kind of talk about that as well huh right I mean for sure I mean you want to you know, don't badmouth the other parent, go into this, you know, knowing that that child has two parents and they want to hopefully have a relationship with both. Um, I do want to mention though, that um, once they're over 18, um, the other parent doesn't have to take their possession time nor really under 18. So um, you want to plan maybe for childcare and childcare costs as part of your overall thinking as you plan for what that child support needs to be and the supports you're gonna need as well. That's something, you know, there used to be two people helping out in the household possibly, um, but now, now, you know, you may be on your own. So definitely, you know, whether or not you get support financially through the divorce for that, just for your own self care and well being, try to get some people to help out um, offload some of your tasks so that you can do what you need to do for your family as well. And that's an important consideration, too, as far as the future um, cost of care, as far as child care and stuff like that, especially if there was a caregiver situation that I was explaining earlier where one parent worked and one parent was a a caregiver. Um, But now because of the divorce, um, the parent that was a caregiver needs to go back to work either full time or part time. And so those caregiving services that were previously being provided most people don't work for free. So unless you have some family member that's going to offer those services for free, that is going to be um, um, a, a pretty big expense. And so I think it's very, very important not to forget that. That's a very good point, Marianne. Then um, so we talked about trusts and I don't know if we talked about third party trust. So in addition to a first party trust, you want to do a third party trust as well because that needs to be where um, definitely recommend getting life insurance is one way to fund future needs of the child, but you wanna make sure that that the beneficiary is a third party trust and not the child themselves, or else you run into other trouble that we talked about with benefits and so on. And then there's other um, like ABLE accounts, the 529A accounts where you can put some money in as well. Um, I think that's just gone up from 15,000 to 16,000. Is that right, Allison? It, it is 16,000 right now, yes. Right. So you, you can do a combination of these things. So uh, like a trust, it effect is a, a first part trust is a bank account. So there's certain ways that you can use that money though and have um, to, to account for that as well as the able account, certain ways that that money can be used. And that one's a little more flexible is why you might want to do that if it makes sense in your situation. 
Um, we actually have webinars on every single one of these topics because we definitely work with families on all of these these things and make referrals for things like guardianship and things like that. So there's whole webinars on our YouTube channel, which we put in the chat box earlier today on this. But one thing as it relates to a divorce consideration that sometimes the divorce attorneys don't bring up and you might want to is life insurance, requiring life insurance on the parents. Right. OK. And this is really important um, because so let's say, for an example, that you're a parent and let's say you're getting three thousand dollars a month in child support. Um, well, if the 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 parent dies, then your child support dies with them. Right. Because they can't earn that money anymore. So life insurance can be a child support replacement basically in the event that the parent uh, the, the parent that's paying child support dies uh, prematurely um, before that child support commitment ends. Um, so, and, and it's the thought of if, if, you know, if we have joint custody, if something happens to me, this, the ex-spouse is going to be um, caring for the kids, the kids have care needs, the life insurance proceeds can fund future care for the kids. You can leave the life insurance to a third party special needs trust with a trustee. So, you you know, you can you can set it up that way. You know, you don't want to leave the proceeds directly to the kid. And a lot of times people don't want to leave proceeds directly to the ex either. Um, so there is a such thing as leaving those life insurance proceeds to the special needs trust or to the trust for the benefit of other kids that may not have special needs. So this is a real thing. And this is another good thing that if you want a court order or if you want a requirement in your divorce that each of you are going to maintain life insurance with the trust for the kids as the beneficiary, you need to get those in those documents, you know, on the front end, not um, not on the back end. Because if it's not in the, your document and you want this later, I would say a really small percentage of, of ex exes agree to life insurance if it's not in that document requiring them to do so. And again, this is just good. Um, it's good protection for everybody. So even if you're getting the child support, um, you should still have life insurance on yourself that's going to fund the trust because if something happens to you, the kids are going to the other person. So, it, so it's kind of an equal thing. So we want to ensure the person that's paying and ensure the person that might be doing the caregiving, both, both equals. Right. That's why you want an attorney who understands these things and be sure to put those in your decree. And one other thing they can put in there um, is, uh, so say the person does pass who's paying a child support, the, um, the child support can then come out of their estate out of their other accounts. So it doesn't have to be that they're living if you're, you know, like you know, if your decree, you know, states it that way. So be sure to have someone who thinks about all the different scenarios that could come into play. And for health insurance, I, make sure, okay. I was just gonna say, I think the biggest thing here for these kids and understanding is the money in the right buckets. That is, that is the biggest thing. And I think the biggest misnomer of, um, where we see that attorneys that aren't nuanced in special needs that they did that's the that that's the big thing in a special needs divorce right definitely for sure for sure and you'll want to also talk about health insurance in the decree as well is the other party going to keep paying for the private insurance if that's what they have now um and even if they're getting medicaid you can have government benefits excluded from the the support so you can um phrase in such a way some people i've i've seen didn't do this where they may lose out some support because of other benefits the child has coming in. But if you write as such, that will what they call supplant and not replace those benefits. So you wanna be able to take advantage of both or benefit from both for your child, the child support amount plus everything that else that they're entitled to. And in terms of what HIP is, it's a program, if you have Medicaid, that if you apply and get approved, they'll actually be able to um, fund than the private insurance. So basically there's no out of pocket on that. So it's a process you have to go through you guys have to submit documents and get approved for it, but definitely something worthwhile to get into. And keep in mind that private insurance doesn't have to end at age 26 as it does for a lot of kids. Uh, you can get, um, depending on the insurance company, forms to fill out to extend that um, for the future as well. 
You were um, you were reading my mind and um, on the group health insurance. So let's say you're going through a divorce. Both of you have access to group health insurance through your employer. Not all employers offer the extension past age 26 for kids with disabilities. I don't know that it's a law. Some some plans allow it. Some don't. But if you're deciding who's the where the kids, what plan the kids are going to be on. I would definitely select the plan that is going to offer coverage post age 26 for your disabled child. Um, that would probably be the plan to stick with if there's one or, you know, one or the other. Um, most of the time, your company that you work for doesn't announce that they have this available. You usually have to call your HR department and ask if it's available. They usually have a specialized form that you have to fill out. Um, so if you haven't ever heard that before, put that on your radar and um, definitely check on that um, because it, it can end up being a, a big deal, especially for our kiddos that have complex care needs. Right, and as your kids also are turning 18 or already um, <clears throat> age of emancipation, You'll want to look at guardianship. You can do sole or co-guardianship. You can do partial guardianship if they may not need all the um, all the the things related to guardianship. And there's also less restrictive things you can do, like power of attorney, self um, all, all different of approaches that um, that we can talk to you about. And Allison has information on as well. That YouTube channel has multiple guardianship um, webinars that we've done in the past, and one of the things that comes up with um, guardianship and divorce is, well, what if my ex is unwilling to sign off on this? So basically it ends up what's in the best interest of the child and there is a guardian ad litem. So if you find yourself in a situation where the child, definitely you guys, somebody needs guardianship, they're turning 18, somebody needs guardianship. Um, maybe they have intellectual disabilities, IQ below 70, et cetera, multiple disabilities. Um, just because you have a ex-spouse that is against this does not mean that the court isn't going to move forward with it. They are going to look at what's in the best interest of the child. The other spouse uh, or ex will be notified, but just because they're against it doesn't mean that it, w does, it won't go through. And, and we do have um, information on that in some of our webinars that we've done in the past on that topic, but that definitely comes up a lot. Thank you. Okay, so overall, we talk about a lot of things, and you may have a lot of questions I haven't looked into the chat. Um, but, you know, like we talked about, you know, make sure you're taking care of yourself, you're taking care of your kids so that you're in the best position you can be uh, through this process, and then in the future too. Um, learn all you can about um, the divorce, what your rights are, what you're entitled to, what your children are entitled to, and, and seek and accept support and advice from others who have been there and have that knowledge. You, you're not gonna know it all, even if you try to research it all, it's, there's, there's too much out there. So definitely you know, find the right resources to help um, you get through the process and get what you need. And uh, look at it as um, you know, having a vision and goals for yourself and for your kids, not just now, but what is life gonna look like after divorce? Maybe start thinking about things that you might wanna do if you weren't. Um, in the workforce and had to take care of your kids. You know, for me, I started, you know, some self-development and, you know, I have a whole new career and a whole new company. So there is you know, light, light at the end of the tunnel. There's things that are out there for you. Your whole life and approach may change. You may become um, hopefully uh, you know, better and, and more satisfied in a lot of ways. And granted, you know, divorce is not an easy process, but, you know, just look at the long term and know that people do get through it and come out the other side in a much better way um, very often. And we talked about um, getting your, your team in place, um, the people who are, understand the process. And there's, there's so much that that even though you have a team that you're gonna to have to follow through on, they're gonna need information from you. You're gonna to have to provide information um, that either needs to be done for the divorce process or for financial things, for guardianship documents, whatever it needs to do. I mean, you, you still have to put in the work, but know that you can do it, stay positive, be strong, and um, you know, don't give up. I like to really say, don't give up, don't give in, right? Whatever the, the exact quote is, but, um, yeah, just know that um, you don't need to be um, 
pressured into something that you don't agree to, just be sure to um, do what's right for you and your children once you understand what all the needs are and all the long-term implications and costs in the future. And, and you may not get everything you want, as Allison said, but just come to the best uh, agreement. You may you know, need to negotiate and, and, and look at all the different circumstances, but try to together come to an agreement that's gonna be in everyone's best interest. And so I'm happy to help you as well, um, you know, create that vision and help you think um, outside your current situation. I know right now it's hard when you're dealing with a divorce and dealing with so much to think about the future, but I can help you do that, um, let you know what the process looks like based on uh, different people's experience and some of the steps involved and connecting you with people who are knowledgeable in this area. And um, a lot of times, there's all things you need to do to prepare for lawyer meetings or think about, um, and I can help you definitely in all those areas as well. So basically I'm your partner in the journey. If you need someone you know, by your side, if it's too much for you to handle on your own or just kind of need some guidance, uh, whatever you might need. And I do offer a lot of free videos as well and resources um, on my YouTube channel. Everything's under Special Family Transitions. So check out my YouTube channel try to address a variety of issues from mental health to you know, working with different lawyers and professionals and just things to think about as you're making decisions and going through the process. And um, so I have a YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. I also um, have a group that I started that uh, hopefully will be more active, will get more involved in, but just kind of setting that up for maybe more private conversations in a group as opposed to um, having everybody involved in that. So feel free to send me a request if you're interested. And that's the, on the screen is the name of the group. So um, please feel free to reach out anytime. I do complimentary consultations and just happy to help out in any way I can and take advantage of all the free resources that are out there. You know, Allison's got tons. We've got a lot of things that um, we do a lot of, um, as I mentioned, the Lone Star Lend ones are coming up and, and there's, there's so many resources out there. It's just a matter of finding them and understanding what is important in your situation and, and doing the best for your children. So um, we're coming uh, to the end of our presentation. And one of the things, um, you know, we, at the end of our presentation, we always talk about things that should be on your radar. And I know you got a lot on your plate if you're going through this right now. Um, but when it comes to a special needs child and a child that might be transitioning or getting closer to age 18, these are some things that should be on your special needs planning radar. We literally have um, webinars on every single one of these topics in detail um, on our YouTube channel. So you can definitely, um, definitely check those out. But I think it's important to understand, um, don't we know about the division of property, right? And how much that hurts, but it's time, you know, at the point that that happens, it's time to, you know, back up and punt and regroup on where are you going, going forward? Have, has your will, has your power of attorney, healthcare power of attorney been updated? Um, have you updated beneficiaries on all of your accounts? Um, 401ks, 403b, former pensions, uh, life insurance through work, life insurance that you got 20 years ago that you forgot about. Um, all of those things are really things that are really important um, after you've gone through the divorce process, and we can certainly uh, lighten the load on some of those things. But um, definitely join us again, and you can go to the next slide, Marianne, Marianne um, for um, our next webinars. Um, you can find our YouTube channel. I did put it in the, um, in the chat box. And again, all of our webinars live out there. So if you've missed one, it, um, the next day or so after the meeting, it does go out there. Um, everybody who attended today is going to get a copy of today's slides, and they're also going to get a copy of the recording either today or tomorrow. Um, we do free um, um, uh, initial consultations to learn a little bit more about you and your journey and the stuff that you're on, the planning that you've done so far for special needs, the questions that you have, or the help that you need as far as determining those future care costs or the social security analysis, we can certainly do all of those um, things. So you can take a picture of that QR code and that goes right to our booking link. Um, and then of course, all of our contact information is there and also in the chat box. So it has been a pleasure 
um, as always, Veronica, being um, here with you and um, Partners Resource Network. Thank you for um, allowing us uh, the opportunity to chat about these things today. And again, um, for everyone that's here, it is going to get better. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it is not always going to be this difficult. We definitely been there, done that, got the t-shirt. It does get better. And we're really glad that you attended today. And we hope you feel empowered and that you've taken away some things that you can implement, you can talk to your attorney about. And if, if nothing else, you take away the fact that you're not alone and there are people here to help and um, absolutely feel free to reach out to us. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate you all having me today and then taking the time to um, uh, participate in the, the presentation today. Sorry we didn't get to all your questions, but feel free to email us and we'll be happy to follow up as well. Thank you so much, Marianne. The content, the resource, everything is, is great for our, our audience. Thank you guys again and hope you can join us tomorrow. We have a great presentation again with Nelson talking about college uh, education for special care uh, children's in transition and stuff. So thank you so much. See you in the next one. Bye now. Bye.